Alexander Volkanovsky is my favorite fighter. And there are a lot of people that are just, in my opinion, delusionally picking him to beat Islam Makhachev. And they aren't giving really good reasons for it. And although he is the best fighter in the world right now, he's the pound for pound number one, I think he's going to get squashed like a bug. I want him to win, but <laughs> I have a few reasons as to why I believe he will not. And I think that Islam will dominate him come the night of the fight. And let's talk about it. So Alexander Volkanovsky, in my opinion, is the best striker in the UFC. He has done the most. He's put on the most impressive performances and schooled some really tough guys throughout his career. I mean, he has two performances over Max Holloway where he basically won every single round by landslide. Alexander Volkanovsky's last time fighting a grappler was Brian Ortega. Brian Ortega doesn't shoot for takedowns like that. I mean, let's be honest. He doesn't have good wrestling whatsoever, and he was still able to take down Alexander Volkanovsky multiple times and landed a clean takedown up against the fence in the fourth round, which a lot of people forget about. Before that, he got taken down four times by Chad Mendez and even had his back taken. I'm just going to say this. Chad Mendez, phenomenal wrestler, but not on the same level as Islam Makhachev. That is the old school, blast double leg style of wrestling that we saw in MMA. This is Islam Makhachev, who is the best grappler in MMA right now. A guy who is known for controlling guys on the ground and keeping them there. Someone that doesn't only have the blast double leg, a single leg. This is someone that has mastered the art of judo. That's how he usually gets a lot of his takedowns from judo. And Volkanovsky's head coach has even gone on record saying that they brought in a lot of judo guys, but it's not the same. So that's another one of my points. You can bring in Craig Jones, who is a really big jiu-jitsu guy. You can bring in, you know, Dagestani wrestlers. You could bring in judo guys, judokas. That won't make a difference. When you're standing in front of the man himself, the guy is, and I hate to say this because this isn't the best argument, but some of these guys from that part of the world that have grown up on the cliffs in elevation and have been grappling since they were little kids and grew up in like a, a really, really poor area, they're kind of just built different. Not all of them. There are guys from Habib's team like Zubaira or Abu Bakar that don't really stand out. But then you have a guy like Islam Makhachev who a lot of people really think is the second coming of Habib. And, I mean, he's basically proving it right now. He just absolutely demolished Charles Oliveira. And regardless of whether or not he just destroyed him on the ground in the first round, because I'll actually say this, if you watch that first round back, Islam and Charles, Charles was holding his own, and he was making it really difficult for Islam Makhachev to mount on any offense. In fact, Charles Oliveira actually threw up some really good submission attempts and was able to escape from half guard. He actually didn't do as poorly as a lot of people thought, but that's Charles Oliveira. That guy is a big lightweight in general, right? He's actually known for having these brutal weight cuts. He's a big guy and also happens to be the number one submission artist in UFC history with the most submissions ever. A guy that everyone is scared to go to the ground with except for Islam Makhachev. And Islam Makhachev not only submitted him in that fight in under two rounds, but he also knocked him down. And this is after Charles had a virtuoso-like performance over Justin Gagey. Another thing that a lot of people are looking past is the fact that Islam Makhachev is incredibly hard to hit. In fact, he is statistically the hardest man to hit in the UFC. And they've figured out these statistics by tallying up all of his fights, right? He has this really tight guard. He always knows how to maintain his distance, how to stay out of the way of danger, and He's also taking guys down, so you have to factor that into the equation as well. I mean, think about the Charles Oliveira fight. He had really been coming into his own when it came to the striking, and offensively, you could argue that at the time, he was one of the most impressive strikers in the lightweight division just based on how he was looking in some of these championship fights. I say offensively, not defensively. Islam Makhachev pieced up Charles Oliveira. Islam's boxing, his boxing looked great. I mean, every time Charles Oliveira would try to close the distance, he would catch a one-two and ultimately was able to drop Charles. And Charles didn't look confident at all, even though he was confident in his ground game. And when people fight these grapplers, they second-guess themselves. And we all know about that, but we can't really underestimate how much that means for the grappler 
when it comes to his offense on the feet. Look at Kamaru Usman versus Leon Edwards. For three rounds, Kamaru Usman was pressuring Leon Edwards up against the fence and teeing off on him. In the Colby Covington versus the Jorge Masvidal fight, look at the Jorge Masvidal and Colby Covington fight. Jorge Masvidal is clearly the better striker, but for five rounds, he was getting pieced up on the cage. And Islam Makashev is way more dangerous of a grappler than Colby is, than Usman is. Sure, wrestling, kind of similar, but when it comes to actually getting held on the ground and being at a threat of getting finished there, Islam Makashev is the best that there is. That is always going to be on the mind of an Alexander Volkanovsky. And for the past four years, he's taken on strikers. And the last time he actually fought someone with good wrestling skills, he was taken down four times. Because of that threat of the takedown, he has to change his game somewhat, right? Islam Makhachev doesn't really have to change his game and change his training that much to take on Alexander Volkanovsky, who is a striker. Whereas Alexander Volkanovsky has to do a complete 180 in his training camp to get ready for an Islam Makhachev, he's going to fight differently. He isn't going to be as confident on the feet, and he doesn't have the power to be able to afford that. His volume will be a lot lower. The amount of strikes that he throws will be lower when he fights Islam. He has decent power. It's average. He doesn't have pillow hands, but Islam has amazing boxing defense, is one of the hardest fighters to hit, and has that threat of the takedown. So you're going to be on the defense of the entire time. And when you're fighting a guy who is the hardest man to hit in the entirety of the UFC, how in the fuck are you going to steal rounds from him? Because even if you can keep it standing, it's going to be tough to mount any offense on the guy. It's going to be tough to land those body kicks that you love landing. One of the attacks Volkanovski goes to the most is his lead kick to the body. And I promise you guys, he will not be throwing that at all during this fight and if he does he's probably going to get taken down by islam sure he has the speed advantage that is an advantage that volkanovsky will certainly have of course the reach advantage but it's very minor will he have the power advantage nope islam makachev has some power he improved a lot on his boxing this is not the same guy that we were looking at before the charles Oliveira fight he showed in that fight that he improved massively and in fact as someone that picked Charles Oliveira to beat him, that was what I was most impressed with throughout that fight, was Islam's ability to counter-strike, was his hand speed, his boxing combinations, how clean and technical he looked on the feet. Alexander Volkanovsky's got some really good wins. He does. But <sighs> he's really only taken out a bunch of strikers. Chad Mendes is the odd man out. And Volk has said that he's expected to get taken down, but the hardest part is holding him there. The hardest part is keeping him there. But Chad Mendes was getting his back. Chad Mendes was getting the body triangle. And sure, he escaped. But that's five foot six Chad Mendes, right? And I understand he's a good wrestler. All right. But let's be honest. He isn't the grappler that Islam Makhachev is. Islam Makhachev is probably a better wrestler than Chad Mendes. He has better judo than him, and he's just 10 times the grappler that Chad Mendes ever was. He has a submission game. He has a squeeze that everyone talks about. Let's talk about the strength. Alexander Volkanovsky is an absolute specimen, right? This guy didn't start training in martial arts up until his early to mid-20s, and since then has become arguably the best striker in MMA and the pound-for-pound -pound number one fighter. Clearly, he is as talented as you could possibly get when it comes to athletics. I mean, he's five foot six and was one of the best rugby players in his professional rugby league team, which is just crazy. He has a longer reach than Islam Makhachev as well. Islam has a 70 inch reach, but that athleticism, his level of explosivity that he has to where he can just explode on these featherweights and just use that rugby toughness to shove guys off of him when they take him down. I think that's going to go out the window because Islam Makhachev is known for being the biggest lightweight and the strongest lightweight. When guys fight him, they always comment on how goddamn strong he is. People have talked about Habib being strong, but a lot of guys have said that the key to his success when he was fighting me, Dustin Poirier said this, it wasn't his strength. It was just his awareness on the ground knowing how to use his body weight. It's just his understanding of balance and weight placement was incredible, dude. Like, 
I've been fighting and wrestling a long time as well, but he just knew where my weight was and where it needed to be. Knowing how to get in really good positions to where his opponents would be subdued and weak. When guys talk about Islam, all of that applies, but they also mention his strength. People have said that I've fought thousands of guys. Islam was just different. And he was so strong at holding his mount. I was like, interesting. I could try to get and turn. I couldn't move out of him. Like, no one's been that strong before. Strength is massive when you're grappling. It means a lot, you know, especially when you're trying to submit a guy, especially when you're trying to stay on top of someone and control them. And Islam is not only going to be stronger than Alexander Volkanovsky, but he's also just much more skilled on the ground. I understand that Brian Ortega has some nasty jujitsu. He doesn't have the ability to control guys like Islam does. Even when Volkanovsky moves up and weighs in at 155 pounds, what's he going to weigh in the cage? 166 pounds, 167? Islam Makhachev is probably going to weigh at least 178 pounds around that. He'll probably weigh around that, right? So he's putting on a ton of weight. Alexander Volkanovsky he's still going to be massively undersized. He just is. Islam is 5'10 and a jacked 5'10. He's not like your average 55 or he ain't like no Justin Gagey or even a Dustin Poirier, like who Dustin is a pretty big guy, big old back. Man, Islam is literally just different. I mean, he's he makes everyone that he fights look small. And so you don't have the strength advantage. And for the first time in his life, Volkanovsky is taking on a grappler with wrestling that's much better than Chad Mendes submission skills and a control game that's much better than brian ortega volk does have a chance i'll give him like a 10 percent chance and some people are going to call me crazy but again how does he win it's extremely unlikely that he finds a knockout but that's part of his chance is to find some kind of a knockout like the one that leon edwards got over kamaru uzman is to have found is to have exposed some kind of a weakness in islam stand up and to work his way around that to find a big knockout shot. Maybe that's what's gonna happen. That's possible. Again, maybe Islam has some kind of tendency that Volkanovsky can expose. But if that's not the case, if he hasn't found the magical opening to Islam's game that no one else has ever been able to find except for you know one of his earlier opponents, then I don't see it going over so well for him in regards to him getting a decision win either because it's hard to hit the guy and you're probably going to also need to rely on some kicks during this fight and it's really dangerous to throw kicks against islam and the last grappler you fought almost submitted you twice and he has been knocked out people saying islam's been ko'd before you're acting like he's unbeatable he's been ko'd so has volk he got knocked out at 170 pounds in another promotion this was before the ufc yes he was way undersized that's like Islam getting knocked out at what? 185 pounds, right? Because Volkanovski is now moving up. He fought the beginning of his UFC career at 155 pounds. He got knocked out at 170. Got wobbled by a head kick and then got knocked out with this guy's hands, with this guy's boxing combination. He's been KO'd. So I don't want to hear that he's never been knocked out before. He's unfinishable. Listen, Volkanovski, as I said, is my favorite UFC fighter. I love the guy's personality. I think he's like the epitome of hard blue collar work. I hope that Volkanovsky beats Islam. I do. I want him to destroy Islam. I want him to find this hole in Islam's game so that he can exploit him. I want him to stuff takedowns. I want him to be taken down and to explode up to his feet. I want to see Islam Makhachev's confidence break during this fight. I'd love Volkanovsky to piece him up, even to TKO him or knock him out. I just think that the MMA gods are too cold to let that happen. I've been watching MMA for a long time, and these are just the things that don't really happen all that often. Six months of training for Islam is just not enough. I'm sorry, it's not. And the MMA gods are too cold to give us what we want. So if you're a Volkanovski guy, if you're from New Zealand or Australia, and you're going to be like, fuck this guy, mate, and you're going to shit on me in the comments, like, go for it. And I'm not just saying Volkanovski is my favorite fighter just so that I can get some of you guys to listen. He actually is. My top three favorite fighters right now are Hamza Chimaev, Alexander Volkanovski, and Robert Whittaker. I think I can make a good argument for Volkanovski being a top five all-time fighter right there at the number five spot. And I think if he beats a Islam Akshev, that bumps him to the number four spot. So yeah, I want Volk to win. 
And if he can get this one done, I will be elated. I'll be happy. I'll celebrate. I'll go out the next day. I'll buy myself a nice big dinner just to be happy that Volk is the champion at 155. You know, I'm looking forward to this fight. It's the most prestigious double champion fight that we've ever seen since Daniel Cormier and Stipe Miocic. What do you guys think? Were there any points that I didn't make in this video? Were there any other points that I forgot to make? And again, if you disagree with me and you think Volkanovski is going to win, please let me know why in the comments. Give me a reason to think that he wins because all the signs are pointing towards a Volkanovski loss. So you want to get in shape. Well, it wouldn't kill you to learn how to cook and you're not going to die just because you eat something tasty. You just have to take those same clean foods and you have to know what to do with them. Let me show you guys an example. Eggs, you've heard of those, right? Potato, white onion, and extra virgin olive oil. And with just four ingredients, I've made myself a delicious potato omelet. So you want to get in shape? You need to know how to cook with simple and healthy ingredients. For more meals like this one and comfort foods made with whole and unprocessed ingredients, check out my Real Food Cookbook.